anybody on the spot, but besides that in the bread of life, are there more? I don't know where you're going to choose. I'm a vine. Mm -hmm. The good shepherd. Any more? Um, the bread of life. Bread. Bread is nourishment for the body, and for millennia, it has really been a necessity. It's been the center of life, the basis of daily nourishment. Um, I spent time in um, Guatemala and in Chiapas, and I just remember every morning, you wake up with the sun, and you could hear the women out, and they were making their bread for the day, they were making their um, tortillas, and they were hear the sound of just this, um, it's like um, a song. And, you know, I think about bread, and I think about cooking it and um, making it, and I don't know how many of you have made bread, but I've made bread myself, and just that whole process of kneading it and working it and putting it together, it just is beautiful, and it's, it's, it's like a flower, and uh, when I wrote that, I went, ooh. No pun intended, but it's like a flower. <laughs> it, it blossoms, it opens, and it blooms, and the smell is just, just heavenly. So today, the disciples and other followers are really kind of tied up in confusion about what Jesus is saying when he says, I am the bread of life. And they wonder, what does it really mean? Because basically, they want food to eat, they want a king that will fight the Romans, protect them, be their ruler, feed them, care for them. <coughs> they are there for the things that he can provide. Things that they want and acts that he can perform for them. They're there for the show. And Jesus, what sign will you do? What works are you going to perform? It almost sounds like they're following the circus. <laughs> and what does Jesus want from them? They're not even really aware of that part of the equation. They do ask it, but I don't know, I just, it's a hard thing. Um, what does Jesus want from them and from us? Ephesians reading today talks about some of what he wants, to advance unity and love, to grow in maturity of faith, and reconciling <coughs> all of all to God with each other, to speak in love, promoting a community of love, and Jesus is speaking of nourishment for the soul, of that love and unity, and the unity of God, and God with each and every one of us. So bread is this physical feeding of the body, and Jesus is the bread, the spiritual feeding. But what if we just feed ourselves on that spiritual feeding, either physically or spiritually? Um, we're in the same place the disciples are today. We say, you know, give us more bread, and we keep that spiritual bread for ourselves. And Jesus wants us to see beyond. We're to spread the bread. Ruby's Pantry is really an interesting event. Um, Ruby's Pantry is a, a thing that we do up here where we bring food up to the county and distribute it. Um, it's food that's being, that has been, um, it's being, I guess, recycled. It's being used and not just thrown away. But it's interesting because it actually feeds people physically as well as spiritually. So Jesus is teaching us to be love for others and to care for others, to be the bread of life for others. So what do we need and what nourishes us and what fills us? We need each other. We need each other loving and nurturing. We need a life-giving force of caring. So nourishment for life takes love. And this need of caring and nurturing um, shows up in many, many stories. It shows up in stories about children who are orphaned. You know, they're fed, they're cared for, they're clothed, but if they're not loved and held and nurtured, they don't grow. And then two stories come to mind, came you know, to mind to me. And one, to start out with, is the Harry Harlow study of monkeys. And I don't know how many of you are familiar with it, but he's an American psychologist who um, worked mostly, I think, at the University of Wisconsin. And he studied um, monkeys 
to learn about maternal attachment. Now, his studies were not humane studies. I'm not even going to go into that. <laughs> but he did discover that monkeys who were given food and warmth and shelter, but they had a wire mesh surrogate mother. So it's just this wire mesh. I think it actually has eyes, but <laughs> it's not very um, loving or nurturing. But they were given food and comfort, or not comfort, but warmth, and um, they failed to grow. But those given a surrogate mother, and all they did was put a warm, give that, that mesh body a warm cloth, and those monkeys, they clung to that warm little cloth, and when they were afraid, they would even go to it, so not even for food, but they, they needed that. They felt that warmth of life, and they thrived. Food is not enough. Nourishment for life takes love. So the other story that I thought of is this children's story that I think of as called Sleeping with Bread or Holding What Gives You Life. And it goes like this. During the bombing raids um, during World War II, thousands of children were orphaned and they were left to starve. Some were rescued and placed in refugee camps where they got good food and care. But the children had lost so much that they couldn't sleep at night. They just had so much fear. Nothing reassured them. And someone thought of an idea of just giving them bread to hold when they went to bed. So they would give them that little piece of bread and they would hold it and they would be able to go to sleep. And they did sleep with that, with that bread in their hand. Um, they held on to it as hope. And it meant, I ate today, and tomorrow I will eat again. It was a literal presence, but if we think about what is fed us each day, and what do we hold that gives us life? So ask the question, what has fed us today? What do we hold that gives us life? Asking these allows us to appreciate how the voice of God speaks, speaks to us. What did Jesus do to be the bread of life for all those people around him? What are Jesus' gifts? And I was immediately reminded of our Gloria. It just came to me. What are Jesus' gifts? And I just thought, power to speak and heal, grace to know it's real, wisdom, insight, and faith, love, and understanding. And these are Jesus' gifts for us. These are the gifts that we share when we relate closely to each other, and they deepen our relationships to love each other and care for each other. This is the bread of life. We become the bread of life. Thomas Merton says, each of us in a special way is in a special way an aspect of the divine. So think of the gifts, power to speak and heal, grace to know what's real, wisdom, insight, and faith love and understanding, our gifts. We come here for communal worship. We gather at the table for the bread of the soul. This communal nourishment is seeing Christ and seeing the bread of life in each other when we, when we gather at the table. This is in each other. Our community with each other to take out into the world, the presence of Christ in us to take into the world. It leads us to actions, it carries Christ's imprint, and it becomes God's love expressed through us. This bread is a presence. Share it with each other, tell stories, listen to each other's stories, listening to each other, listening to our pain and our joy. This is giving the bread of life. What does Jesus want from us? Um, and I'm going to read a prayer from Teresa of Avila. Um, I've read this before, and I'm pretty sure probably some people have heard this before. But, Christ has no body but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks at compassion on the world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Yours are the feet. Yours are the eyes. You are his body. Christ has no body now but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. 
Yours are the eyes with which he looks compassion on the world. Christ has no body 